video we will build a dynamic Kanban board with simple Excel functions. So I wanted to create a board accessible to anyone, even with all the versions of Excel. So this board will split your task into four categories and they are set as parameters, uh, meaning that each category can be defined by you. Each task will have a short description at the top. Uh, you can use it for whatever you like. It could be a short description for the task, a resource name, a project name, whatever you like. You can also choose if you want to show a date as part of this title. This is another parameter that you have. Each board also will show a flag for the tasks you have marked as urgent. You can input descriptions as long as you want in a data entry tab, but you can decide how many will show on the board based on a parameter and the system will show this symbol if you have a spill, meaning if the description is too long for what you have set as a parameter. You can also decide how to sort those tasks within the category. It could be date, title or input sequence. You can decide if a task is to be hidden from the board. And a quick summary at the top will show you how many tasks are visible, how many tasks are hidden and will show you a plus if the amount of task is bigger than the amount you decide in the parameters. This is valid only for to-do or in-progress tasks. Tasks that are finished or on hold, uh, we do not need that level of information. Finally, you can select whatever color scheme you want and I will show you how to do that. We're on our way, welcome to this tutorial. Now, I have created three tabs here. I've done some of the pre-work here, so you don't see me making typing mistakes. So dashboard, data entry, and settings and calculations. So we'll start with settings and calculations. We do some uh, stuff here. We'll come back to it later on, but uh, here I have created three tables. It's just to input some uh, settings for the Kanban board itself. So the first table is just uh, three rows here. The first one is uh, the show the date after the title. So this will let the system know if we want to show the date or just the title for each one of the descriptions. I'm going to start with yes, and I'm going to name uh, this cell. That will make things easier, especially from a tutorial point of view for you to grasp. So here I put a cell name here. So this is just to, to remind us uh, what's the name of that cell. In order to name the cell, there's several ways, but just uh, show you one way here is you click on the field and then you put the name here and show date and you press enter twice. So that's it. Now I can uh, refer instead of saying of instead of referring to E4, I can refer to this name here and you have a bit of an explanation that will show in the title line above the task description. I'm going to do the same here. So this is the max length, length of task description on the Kanban board. Now, depending on how you want to size your, like just to go back here where you have it, uh, depending on how you want to size your, your spreadsheet, uh, you might want to have um, a different uh, description length. So what happens is beyond that, if I'm going to start with 90, uh, beyond 90, uh, we will show this sign here the in brackets with the three dots here just to let people know there's more to the description but that's all we can show uh, i have to name it as well here so max length press enter twice otherwise it's going to think that you want to go somewhere and the max to show on totals for one line so this is the same uh, depending on the size of your spreadsheet you might want to uh, put more or less but uh, here I will get started with just eight. So just show the maximum of eight uh, little squares to tell us where we are. So if it doesn't make sense, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll come back to those later on. So max dot twice. Okay, so unit are number. So that uh, requires some explanation. So if you are not aware of this, uh, there's two ways as far as I'm concerned to input special characters. Um, the first way is to go to insert and you go to symbol and here you find symbol. This is a good way. Uh, the downside with this is you need to change the the font. So you will need to put here webdings or all the likes uh, in this. And that can make things a bit strange when you have a look at the formula. Uh, the other way is to use the unit chart. So to use the unit chart, it's very simple. You can look online and you'd see 
uh, different values that you can have for your DHR. They are not all available for Excel, but uh, uh, those three are. So let me show you how it works. You put your DHR. This is uh, an Excel function. And then you go and pick up that field. And then it will display you that field here. And now I just can drag that down. So you see what I'm getting at with this. If you saw the intro, is that uh, this will be showing the uh, tasks, sorry, that are hidden, the one that are visible, and the two one and when there is more, which is when you have more than eight. I'm going to name those as well, so because <laughs> otherwise it'd be a bit tricky to refer to. So this one hidden, this one visible, and this one more. Okay, now when I want to refer to those, I will just use this cell name here. I could give you an example here, for instance, if I have equal uh, hidden. <laughs> Sorry, it doesn't work. Oh, that's because I made a spelling mistake. I thought this demo was just going to be completely wrong. So here, if I say, just say equal hidden, it works. Okay. Now let's check we haven't done any spelling mistakes. Another way to check your spelling mistakes all at once is you're going to formula name manager and you and you see them all. Like for instance, here I can uh, delete this one. Okay, so hidden is this, visible is that. Okay. Uh, status. So um, that, this is where you can put the status that you want. And this is why I named them. So because after we'll be referring to the name. So I'll start, for instance, with to do in progress, done, and on hold. If you don't like those, you can change them because we'll be using the, the status name. So it will, uh, it, you will need to, you will not need to refer to those hard coded fields. So here, status one. Oops. I need to concentrate this time because status one, status two, status three, status four. Good, you've done it, good. So obviously this will have to be done once we have some data to play with, it will be for the totals. Now we've done one, let's go to the second tab, the data entry tab. So this is where we will be inputting our data that will then be displayed on the Kanban board. So I have pre-filled some things here so you don't see me type all the time. Uh, here we have the task status. So let me, uh, I suppose, give you uh, an example here. So I just go to the data validation here, data, uh, data validation. And here I will put a list and here I will go back to the source here and I will put those four. So if you change them, that will be that dynamic. That will be automatically done. How many rows I have? Actually, this number is just to show you. You don't need to put them, but I went completely nuts. I, I went for uh, 80 tasks. Uh, there's always someone asking a question, can you do more? Can you do more? So fully 80 will be sufficient. So that gives you roughly, as there are four boards, uh, 20 per board. So I'm hoping that uh, <laughs> will do for you. Uh, and then what I can do is I can drag that all the way down to make sure that the validation is applied for every field. Just checking, yeah, that's it. So if I start with uh, the first task that is to do, Okay, so if I just click here, I like to have everything centered. Okay, now show task. Now, uh, as I was saying in a, in a previous demo, is uh, you know, Kanban board is supposed to be very quick. You put task here and then you remove it a couple of weeks later if you're lucky. So it's not, uh, you don't want to have the, the board that is uh, keep building, especially for the uh, I suppose for the tasks that have been completed or that on a whole, you don't want to show 50 completed tasks. So here then you can get rid of them uh, by putting no here, or you could completely delete it if you preferred. So show task. So here I'd like to do a little quick validation as well. I'm just going to go to uh, data validation. 
and I'm just going to put a list. And here I'm going to be lazy. Don't look. Uh, I'm just going to put y and uh, okay. So here I just can look y and here I'm going to put y and then uh, actually I'm just going to clear it and I'm going to drag that down as well all the way down till 80. That's it. Title. So you can put whatever you want in the title. So the title would be the uh, cell that is above the description. Uh, you can put the resource, you can put a team, even you can put the project name, you can put whatever you want, even a date, but we'll have another field that you can use for the date. So here, the only thing is it better be <laughs> short. Uh, and actually, this is one of the settings here, I believe. Uh, max to show length of task description, show date after title. Uh, so here you see if you want a date or not after the title. But here that, that, that will be short, obviously, because we have only one line. So for my example here, I'm just going to put uh, some resource, for instance. I'm just going to put John here. Urgent. Uh, let me just copy this here so the validation is already done. Urgent, yes, no, yes, sorry, I'm going to put yes here. Urgent, yes, no, I'm going to put no to start with. So this will show a flag beside the task. Require completion date, so this is optional, but if you want to uh, show the date, then obviously you need a date. So here I'm just going to put just in case 12th of December 2024. Description here. Uh, this is where you go crazy with your description. Um, sorry, I'm going back and forth between tabs, but it's just to show you that the description here, I have 90. So I'm not doing, uh, I will be doing, actually, I could do a check here. I will do a check to, to uh, uh, alert you when there, there is more than uh, 90 in this description, which is not the end of the world. The, the, only, uh, ex, uh, the only change that you will have is you will have this bracket with three dots. So here I'm just going to put a random uh, description, I suppose. Okay, so, and here I, I need to calculate the length of this at some stage. Uh, what is the formula for length? Length for this. Let's see. I'm just going to put back the normal, the normal. Uh, okay, so here the length is 43. So what I could do for this field is I could, uh, I could make a me wrap text and I could give a warning when this is uh, the length of this is greater than 90 so it will tell me that it will be truncated so we have conditional formatting new rule use a formula and uh, if this field here without any dollar please is greater than is greater than the max length. I want to show something here, just a bit of a notice. Uh, that's it, and they will understand. Okay, so here if I put a very long one, uh, let's see. Uh, if I put it very long, so it, so it will show this and that will uh, let you know that the field will be uh, <laughs> truncated. Okay, so this is a field here that we can hide somewhere uh, towards the end. Okay, so this is where we will be inputting the data. So let me populate this with some random data uh, to get us started. Uh, just going to put uh, something here. I just need to, to wrap the text here. So this is just some random data that I've put. I put some urgent, yes, no. Uh, okay, so here, when I've copied, I've erased this. So I just need to make sure that the data validation is reapplied to all these later on. And here, I just need to format paint, uh, put some uh, proper formatting here. So here, now I have some dates. I have some dates here. I have the task status, I have description. Okay, so now I'm going to work on this. So this is going to help me build the Kanban board. 
Uh, I put it in gray because uh, it, you can hide it towards the end. Actually, I'm just going to show you how to hide this. You just select all these. You put the data and put group and then you hide it this way. So the user uh, will, will not see it. So I'm just going to remove the grid line as well. Actually, this also you could hide it. The same trick, data, group, and you hide it. So this way the users won't be seeing this. Okay, so to use this Kanban search, we need to concentrate a little bit on the formula here. So here I've decided to put everything on one line. I, uh, sometimes I had to break it down, but this time I thought I'll go crazy. So uh, the formula in a nutshell calculates how many to do I have found before. And then I will allocate a number. If it's the first to do, then I will put to do one. If it's a second to do two, the third to do three. And uh, the way I do that is I first check if the, the task is visible and after I count how many to-dos and uh, to do in, in that row. But in order to do this, I'll lock in the first. So I'll make sure I'll top from, start from the, the top here. Uh, but I'll let the second be 10 uh, free. And then uh, this is obviously I count as well how many have the show task there. So if I press enter here, that will show me this is the first to do. If I drag it all the way down, uh, see these ones have show task no, so it doesn't count them. Uh, this one has to do, so it to do two, here to do three, here it's, it's an in progress. So in progress, it starts from one all the way to three. So this formula works. I mean, if you want to stop it and have a good look at this, uh, it's not always easy to explain. Now, the second, uh, one is uh, the title. So what do I need a uh, different field for the title? And by the way, the reason why I have to, to, to do all this also is because we'll be using the, the VLOOKUP. Uh, so the VLOOKUP is um, an old uh, Excel function um, that is a bit restricting in a way that uh, you need to uh, have a table in a specific order and you search from left to right. So the X lookup would have been easier, but I wanted to go back to the you know earlier version of Excel to uh, be democratic and allow everyone to build this one, regardless of the Excel version. Okay, so why do we want a task, uh, task title? Why do we want to redo it here? Because we already have this. But what we need to check is uh, that uh, there is a, a date that we might want to add or not. So based on this field here, the show date, I will concatenate this and with the date and I will add, add a due uh, double comma. So let's see how we can do this. So this is the way I do it. So if the first thing to check is uh, we add the D10, so we had the description. And then the first thing we check is uh, if the show date, uh, that's a field that I showed you just before, is equal to Y. Then I hard code the due, and after I put the date here. Uh, so if you don't like the due, you just can remove all this and just put the, the date. Uh, now when we concatenate, there is just something that we need to do is we cannot really format a field that has been concatenated. Uh, because formatting only works with numbers. So we have to use the text function here to format the date. And here I've, I've done uh, the text function applied to the date. And I just want to show the first, the day, uh, as a number. And then I will show the, the month as a text. And this is why I've put three M's here. So this is how it works. Might be a bit easier to understand here. Here I have the task title due 12. So just so, uh, something to bear in mind that it will be a little bit bigger here with the, uh, when you have the date. Uh, task description. We could have just copied it, but uh, just to go, go the extra mile, uh, I just wanted to add the free dot here. So I'll just let me walk you through quickly uh, this formula here. So if the length uh, is greater than uh, the max length, then uh, left uh, digit 10, so we only put uh, the 90 characters on the left. And then we put this uh, parenthesis and these three, three dots. If not, 
if we are good say we just put the, the wall lot so here let me wrap this okay so if I do like before if I add plenty of uh, uh, characters here so this one becomes red now uh, this one showing me 105 and this should show me some if I can show it to you. So you see this is showing this little sign here at the end. So this seems to be working so far so good. Now urgent show urgent. So this is uh, something that uh, I want to use uh, a conditional formatting. So what I want to do here is quite simple. Um, I want to uh, show if this field here is yes, the agent is yes, uh, equal to yes. Then I want to put one or else I put zero. So here I didn't have the urgent, but if I put urgent to yes, it shows me one. Okay. So we've done it. So if I just uh, click the bottom right here, I just, uh, I have populated all this. So here you could do some tidy up. Uh, if you are bothered with this, yes, you could, uh, you could do some tidy up, um, but I'm not too concerned because this table will be hidden. We can hide it. Okay, and the length here. I could have calculated the length directly as a formula in conditional formatting, but uh, I just, I just um, it's a little bit clearer this way. So we good for this, I believe. Oops. Any questions? <laughs> no. Okay. No questions. We can continue. Now let us continue. So the first thing is we go to the dashboard now. The first thing that I want to do is I want to show which board we're we talking about here. So I'm just going to the first one. So I could put equal status one actually, status one. And here we can, you know, play around with the formatting later on, but uh, I'll be using the plum, the plum, uh, just in case I have to show you as usual here, we're playing with the plum, which is the office. Uh, I'm not into 2022 anymore, I'm using 365, so I have office here, and then the plum is the second, second from the right, and I'm using the accent 5, which is the top one here. And I will be doing all the to-do things with uh, using this plum, but using different accents. So for instance, this one here, I will be using the second one, this one and here I will be using a lighter one even okay now I would like to add some very thick white border to separate uh, the two uh, so I'm just going to go to more borders uh, I will before I put the white I want to click on this because once you put the white it hides everything uh, it's not extremely smart see when you put white it hides everything uh, okay, so let's see if it's big enough. Yeah, okay. Okay, so now we can progress. We can, we just need to retrieve. Oh, actually, this is, I um, need to put that a little bit bigger and I need to center it. So now I need to go and retrieve the data from uh, the table that I've created. Uh, I was doing that using the filter function uh, in my previous demo, but here I just want to go the old fashioned way and use the VLOOKUP. So the way I'm doing it is I am building this VLOOKUP as you can see here. So here I'm concatenating the status and a number here. I will see how we can build this number. And I'm retrieving the data from here. Like here, for instance, I have to do one, and this is my key, and I will retrieve this. And to do two, I will retrieve this. To do three, I will retrieve this. Or the title, I will retrieve absolutely everything using this. So the dashboard here, uh, I'm building the first part here as I'm building to do N1. I've created, uh, I've named this prep table. I'll show you how to do it. And then I'm retrieving the second element. The second element is the title here. 
and so therefore here I need to do the same but I need to uh, I cannot if I just copy it uh, and I just paste the function only uh, it doesn't find anything because it's looking for a number here but if I put the number one it will uh, retrieve me this but I want to retrieve something else I want to retrieve I believe the third when there is a description and I will put that on top okay so here if I change if I put two here it is going to retrieve me the second to do one uh, second to do one which is uh, so the second to do uh, which is the conduct comprehensive market research that's it okay so now we understand the process I wanted to show you how to you know create a table here so what you can do is just select absolutely everything you go to the bottom and same principle you call it prep table here how can we have this is not our biggest challenge but challenge but uh, how can we have the proper number here so what we do is we create one and one here and here we just add one plus one and here we refer to the same one at top and then we can do this all the way down to 20 oops yeah <laughs> uh, 20 will be enough uh, uh, although we have 80 so it could be more but I'm just going to stop at 20 here okay that's it should keep everyone happy um, so now as usual I want to create one very well here I want to make sure it's perfect and then I can uh, duplicate it uh, towards the bottom and then I will create my other board and that should be much easier to do so what do I need to do here uh, maybe uh, I can keep this one in black but this one I think needs a little bit of uh, white put it at the center here a little bit bigger okay if, if I want to you know I could either duplicate it now so for instance if I just copy here and paste paste here that will take me the following ones and then we can see you now you can uh, select all those and apply the same height that you want uh, but now we can see this one was longer than 90 so this is where it stopped uh, what I was saying before is if you want to put this wider for instance uh, then depending if you have very long descriptions you might want to allow more you you will be able to allow for more descriptions here but I'm going to keep it tight uh, I like to have the four on one go um, so here what I'm doing is as I'm referring to to this field here when the field change I'll be able to copy it across uh, so that we that should all work when I create my other boards so this is this is uh, almost there now what I wanted to add under the to do is I wanted to add a bit of a progress uh, I wanted to show something a little bit different than the usual count uh, I wanted to show symbols like this so if there's four visible tasks I will put four of those uh, if up until eight I suppose when the total of those two is eight then I will put a plus after when the task is in the hidden I will put a dark square and then I will put a plus then if it's more than eight so how do we do this now it's time to come back here and do some calculation now in order to calculate how many uh, tasks have the to-do status it's very easy now that we have created our our name range so we do a contives because we want to uh, check two things the first thing is the, that the task status range that we have created just now is equal to status one which is this field here and because that's a name of the that's just for and for this so this is this field here and that our uh, show task is equal to y so show task just uh, as a quick reminder so this is show task so we have show task here this is equal y task status to do so easy so and I can track that down because this will follow so here uh, <laughs> it will not follow uh, because here I just need to yeah because I put status one I suppose uh, so either here I put status two it's uh, status three 
status four. Okay, so we have all the visible here. And now for the fun part. So I'm going to use the repeat uh, function. So repeat the repeat uh, the text. What text do I want to repeat? I want to repeat. Uh, this is the visible, so total visible. Uh, I want to repeat this symbol here. And how many times do I want to repeat it? Eight times. This is how it works. You just say, say what you want to repeat here and how many times you want it to be repeated. And with a little look, it works. So we just make it a little bit smaller. Uh, so here I could do the same, three, two, one, so it works. Now what happens if I copy this one here? Okay, I'm just going to copy here for not visible. So what's the difference between a visible and a not visible? Okay, it's a show task. Show task, no. Ah, not yes, no, that doesn't exist, show task, no. And here do the same. Okay, so same, <laughs> same problem, I need to rename this. Uh, just wonder what happens if I just use the cell, but I suppose that will look cleaner. 1100. Zero, zero. So uh, I don't want to show the not visible for uh, the done and on hold. I just don't want to do it because it, uh, it will be too much uh, too much stuff. So you've been working this project for a while, so a lot of done will be you don't want to show them, so you hide them, and therefore you don't want to have to uh, to put the plus. So I will be bypassing this. Uh, okay, so same same here. So here, what, what happens when I do this instance? Okay, so I'm copying the field here. He's got it. He's, he's only selected one here, but he's taking the wrong cube. So I need to make sure that I take instead of visible, I take the hidden field hidden okay and yes yeah, so, so we have only one hidden can I add more here uh, show no okay we are live here so I'm taking big risk uh, so but in this case it works now when do we show this plus here uh, this plus is being shown only when the total here is greater than uh, those two. So what I need to do maybe is uh, I need to move this here and here calculate a total. Just keep the same formatting. Uh, total length. I'm going to put seven plus two, those two fields here. So nine and nine. So this I said I will R code zero here because I don't want to show it. So I didn't need to, I didn't need to put the formula because I went zero here. So here the total length will be, will always be just visible for this one, for the done and on hold. So here I have the total length. So how many I will have uh, seven blank square and two. So seven plus two, it's nine. Well done. So now I want to calculate if I want to show this show plus here because we are talking about this field here. We want to put the, uh, the squares here. So we want to make sure that we don't have more that it doesn't go uh, overboard. So here I calculate if uh, the total length of the two here is greater than this one, which is max dot, then uh, I will put, I will show this line here. I will show the sign, and this sign will be used later on for calculation. So here you go. So here you do that, and you drag, and it should tell you if you show the sign or not. So I will be showing the sign on this one. And finally, for this here, I'm just visualizing how many uh, tasks are visible or how many are hidden. So. I'm using the left, so I calculate, I concatenate the two and I just select the first eight. And uh, if applies, I put a plus at the end here. So 
max concatenation of this one plus this one max dot eight and then I add this one so in this case here there's nothing so it will add nothing here so see there's two visible visible but I don't show them because this is too big so how does this work so here it's easy then I can just go here and that's the advantage of using unit child you don't need to worry about the, the font and I go and pick this one up so here obviously this is a little bit big to my test but you know if you just do something like this and you can put uh, something quite strong I think we'll worry about the, the detail later on but so this uh, you can see here the way I have sized this I could put much more so I could go into my settings and I would say I want to show uh, 10 and if I say 10 uh, that removes the, the plus and, and that will show it this way okay so we made good progress on this so now I suppose how can I make sure that I could copy that across when I'm finished with all this colon here so we just need to have a look at references so would that make sense uh, to uh, build to do one here yes yeah, so this one needs to be able to move but here this one here needs to make sure that uh, there is it doesn't move so there's a dollar b uh, so that should move so that should be okay a prep table two false well let, let's let's try okay i'm just going to do a very rough try here i'm going to put status two in progress and here i'm just going to brutally copy this and see if it works uh to john so here it gets in progress with one uh, so the dollar were at the right place uh, we want to make sure that this one uh, does not move the seven doesn't move okay and it, so that seems to be working obviously it's the wrong color um, but okay the first in progress would be John facilitated collaborative the first in progress this one is hidden John facilitated collaborative wow it looks like it works okay so I think uh, if you could even just uh, copy this and just insert copy cells here uh, that will work as well so that's good we just need to make sure that we reproach this and change all the all the colors uh, but uh, uh, first I think we need to build that all the way down okay so as we copy here we see all these NA's so there's several ways to get rid of the NA's uh, the first one would be to check if there's an error on this VLOOKUP and then in this case you don't put anything uh, but I have even a more brutal way to deal with this is what I want to what I want to say if there is an error then I want to change the conditional formatting and put everything white so I'm just going to select all that and I'm going to say conditional formatting uh, a new rule uh, based uh, on the cell that contains so here I have to say if if there is an error I'm just going to put everything in white white uh, the font in white okay so it looks like we only need to bring back the flag and after it will be uh, to be the the brutal copy and paste so what I want to do for the flag is I want to do also a VLOOKUP so I'm just going to see if it works here put a VLOOKUP here and I want to check to do and I want to check for the first one okay so that hasn't changed so I want to do a VLOOKUP here but instead of retrieving the second uh, colon I want to retrieve the one or two so here the second is this the third is this so the fourth colon I want to retrieve the fourth colon here and here we have a one now I don't want this uh, conditional formatting uh, I just copied the formula so it brought back the conditional formatting uh, so I'm going to clear the rules and then here I'm going to clear the formatting itself but I still want to show okay so here I retrieve a one so here I, I just need to copy that all the way down uh, so I'll just take this, just copy this, copy this. So I'll be copying that all the way down. 
Uh, here I have one when it's urgent, so it should be, I can check it actually. So the first one, to do one, will we have urgent? Yes. Okay, so I want to use the, <laughs> the power of Excel for that. Uh, I go under conditional formatting and uh, I'm just going to use the icon set. So I'm just going to do it in two steps. The first step is I'm going to retrieve the icon. The second step is I'm going to go back here and manage rule and I'm going to play with this. So here that gives you several options. First option is uh, show icon only so you can remove the one and zero. We'll do that later on. And here what, I, what do I want to do? I want to say if it's uh, greater than 0 0.5 say, I want to show a red flag. So here when value is greater than 0 0.5, so I'm just going to put the number here and I want to put 0 0.5. When a value is greater than 0 0.5, I want to have a red flag. And you know what? I don't want to worry about the others. I want to show no icons. So no, no cell icon. So if it's one, it's going to show me a, a red flag, hopefully. And I'm just going to put number here to be consistent. And everything under one, it should show me no icon then. And I'm just going to, I'm going to leave it the number for, for, okay, let's just see, apply. So it's removed them. You only leave them when there's a one. Okay. Now I can go one step further and uh, show icon only and it should work. F famous last word. That's it. Okay, so we are pretty, pretty close to, to finishing here. So now here for that colon, you, you can do the same trick because when you'll be reaching the um, data that you cannot find, it will put you the NA and you can put an if NA and make that formula a little bit more complicated. Uh, but uh, uh, I just want to, hang on, click, what's the uh, options here? Uh, no, I just want to do the same trick as I had before. Uh, if, you know, if error is a formula uh, contains, if errors, then I want to put all white, font white, and that's it. So that should remove it. So that's removing it. So now I wanted to uh, replicate that. Okay, so I'm just going to copy those two. Um, copy, and then I put an ins uh, insert copied cell. And here, uh, instead of status one, I put status two. Oops. Okay, in progress. So it doesn't find anything in progress, okay. Now it doesn't find anything because there is nothing, because I've put everything into to do here. So if I put several in progress, here's hoping that it will work, uh, in progress. Okay. So, and now you choose, uh, just I need to bring back the proper settings and calculations so for in progress i bring that back this one back here uh, and i change the color so here i add plum uh, for this one say i want to use the this blue here i just need to change the color of this blue here uh, maybe even stronger and and here you would do the same so uh, i think that uh, uh, hang on do this and here this so as long as it's the same strength of color, I think that will work. Uh, let's put this one, uh, the first in progress, let's put it as a in progress. The first one, let's put it at urgent and see if it picks it up. Okay, that's lucky. Now if you want to create for a dashboard, I think, uh, you know, you just have to do this and, and actually what I'm suggesting, uh, uh, let me take those three here, copy, insert copy cells, and here you would put uh, the third color that you want. Uh, let's go, let's move. Okay. Here you'd put status free.
done. I've done I don't have any. So it's time for me to uh, put a bit of done here, done, done, and then uh, on hold. Okay, so I should have some here. Uh, uh, retrieving the proper unit here, third one here, uh, putting the right color on it. And then I'll show you probably a better way to duplicate all this. And then uh, doing this again, copy. You know how it works, status four this time. And it's all automated. Now, what color do we have left? Actually, this one I want to, what do you think? Uh, oh, oh, not this, but this. I want to put it in grayish uh, because it's on hold. Don't want to drag too much attention on it, but I will retrieve this. Okay, uh, put it in practically black, very strong. Here I will put a lighter, that's it. And then a very light one for this one. Okay, so here the, a better way to uh, duplicate this uh, might be to um, copy this. Actually, here I just need to make sure that uh, I put a zero here and I put uh, that plus one. Make sure that it, it doesn't um, mess up its calculation. So if I just copy this here and here I'd put an uh, uh copy cells, so that should work, uh, but this should be referring to that, and this should be referring to that. Okay, so now let's say if I just uh, delete all that stuff uh, that I've created, and I can, uh, I can remove all this. Now instead, a better way, as long as the length are correct, 77 pixels, I just copy this and I insert copy cells and then I copy all this and I do an insert copy cells. Oh wow, almost done. So what do we put on top of this? Uh, choose your color. Um, <laughs> Uh, blue has a reputation to be uh, more uh, used because it's a bit more flexible. You, you just have a, a greater range and easier on the eye as well. So here if I insert a text box, no, I don't want to put a text box. I want to put a shape that is uh, a bit rectangular with round corners. Uh, I think we've seen enough squares for today. Here I could select one of those maybe and I would put the name here, um, task board for project ABC. Okay, so <laughs> what I've done here, I've done a paste ABC, enter this time. Okay, so I click on this, I put a bold uh, center, center everything, and I just make it much bigger. Okay. Uh, I want to put shadow on this as well. I don't know. Okay, so this is getting really close to the final version. Uh, what do you think? I think this uh, may probably need to be a bit smaller. Oh, I think this looks quite good. I need to test the dawn, uh, dawn, uh, urgent, yes. And there's another thing you can do. You can either, you know, convert this into a table to do some sorting, uh, but you can also just select uh, the heading here and you put, uh, you go to the data and you select a filter. So that will uh, allow you to sort things for why sort things you could ask everything is here beautifully uh, organized 
But let's say that you want to sort by resource or by, by title, because resource obviously is just an example here, or by project name. Let's say you have several projects here. So if I select, for instance, by title info, now it will sort under each individual uh, group, it will sort it by uh, the resource name. If you want to sort by uh, a due date, which uh, in this instance I need to show it maybe. You short by you sh you short you sort by due date here, and here we show you by due date. And then if you want to revert back, you just say, uh, "Oh, you need to include this one." You could just do all this, remove the filter, and reapply it. And this time, it include this one, and you say from smallest to highest, and this will will put it back the way it was at the beginning. Just another option uh, you, that could be useful, I think. Uh, okay, well, I think this is coming to an end. Uh, as you can see, this is this can be applied to the very old versions of Excel. Um, and obviously, as usual, you can change the color as you wish by just sliding your cursor here around that. And actually, this this green here doesn't look too bad. Uh, I like the red, the red ones are usually pretty much in your face, but you know, <laughs> sending a strong message. Uh, and that's it. And let's say you choose one here that you like, uh, say this one, <laughs> very bright. And that's it. That's all you have to do. You just stay this way. Uh, the thing is, I will have changed this as well. That doesn't look too bad. And I will have changed this as well. So that's another option for you. Actually, I, I like this in your face stuff. The red is a bit bright here, but um, this seems to be working okay. I'm leaving you with this bright colors one and um, I'm wishing uh, you all the best if you want to build this. Otherwise, there's a link if you want to get it direct.